How are you doing, YouTube? This is a goat control deck that I played in a recent goat tournament that they had at my locals. There wasn't a lot of people that turned out, but we did get three rounds in, which was nice. And the only player that I lost to was also a chaos control player, which I'll give him his props. He, he was he was better than me with it, and I'll give him that. But I do like my build, and it is really good. Uh, there is it's a 40 card deck. I haven't counted the monsters and spells. So I'm sorry if I can't give any exact details on the number of monsters and spells and traps that I run. But it is 40 cards. Starting off, you got the boss monsters. You gotta run BLS and then the triple chaos sorcerers. Let me move this out of the way here. These are kind of like standard. I've seen players play two. I've seen players play three of the sorcerer. I like I like three. Three's really good for me. And they really put pressure on the board when they come out, including the BLS. BLS is an MVP for this. Uh, other monsters, Thunder Dragon. They start. This starts off my light monsters, by the way. Thunder Dragon is an MVP. He's re he's a really good card. When you run him, it's kind of like running four Sinister Serpents. I mean, it's it's really good card. It's a good combo to do with this card is ditch the Thunder Dragon, add it, and then ditch it for Graceful Charities. They're also good for late game for tributing off like spirit reapers when they're dead or dead merchants or anything like that that just can't be used and no way of getting them face down again it's really good late game and also banishing it with a card that i will soon talk about in my traps it's really good for bringing back also with him so thunder dragon's really good magical merchant two of it's it's a must play at two i feel like if you don't play two don't run it at all but it mills and it gets you a spell and trap afterwards after milling so it's I mean, it's really the only thing that's really used for. I never set it for life. I set it just for the purpose of getting mills. And it's light, which is a good thing for this deck. Two faith. Three is way too many. One's not enough. Two is really good. It gets you back your spells from the grave that can really help you out in situations in the game. And it's also a light target. And then rounding off for... Oh, this isn't the final light. Uh, Diddy Warrior Lady and Ashra Priest. These are the last two lights. Ashra Priest is good for killing goat tokens off because it can attack all monsters once each on the board. And it's good for clearing boards, It like for many boards like this, if they have a lot of faiths or something that's weak, it's good for clearing them all out too. Uh, DD Warrior is an out to a lot of cards. DD Warrior Lady outs BLS. It outs Thousand Eyes. And it's really good in Beast Down too because it outs a lot of the bigger monsters that you can't deal with. And on to the dark, Dekoichi, he's he's definitely a fan favorite of mine. I really love Dekoichi a lot. The guy that I was playing didn't run any Dekoichis. Uh, I want to remember what he was playing. I'm sorry, I can't remember at the time. But he, the guy that I lost to did not run Dekoichi. I know that. I forgot why he ran over it, though. I know one was a Cyber Jar, but I forgot the other thing. But Dekoichi's really good for getting draw power. Um, next is a Night Assailant. I only have one, and if I had the second one, I, pr I don't know if I would play the second one. It's really good for also with Graceful Charity. It's kind of like a fifth Sinister Serpent. Whenever it's discarded to the graveyard, you can get a flip effect back to your hand. So like dead morphing jars in your graveyard, face or merchants for meal power. You can get it all back with him. And he's also a Raikou or a Maneater Bug with killing monsters. Uh, you got Breaker. He's a standard in every goat deck, even Beast Down. He gets, when he's normal summon, he gets the counter, and he's an MST. He can remove the counter, MS, blow up a card, like I said, MST. He's also a good beat stick, too, at 19, when you don't remove the counter. Uh, Sang in a must in almost every goat deck, but beast down. He searches out almost half the cards in the deck, and he's really good for baiting off stuff with setting it. Xerion, I've debated running two of this card, but I'm going to keep it at one. Xerion is goat. For those of you, for those of you that is like he's not goat, he is goat, and he's really good for piercing damage. I really like Xerion a lot. And then Sukiyomi, good for countering beast down decks. Really good for reflipping your Dekoichis, redrawing more cards. Uh, really good for the face and merchant mills, and it books on it books things on summon. The only bad thing I have to say about this card is when it's the only monster in your hand, it's really dead because if you summon it, it's forcing it to book yourself if your opponent doesn't control any monsters. But it's really versatile. I would not run two in the main deck, but I do have one sided, and we'll get to the side deck soon. 
uh, Spirit Reaper for the last Dark Monster in the deck. Point, the, the simple point is he, he's just for stall power. I've thought about taking him out, but I feel like he's a must in almost every deck as well. Um, the, for the standards in every deck, Beast Down runs it. This is Chaos Control. They may not be Darks or Lights, but they're standard. Sinister, automatic, Sinister constantly comes back to your hand, so it's discard fodder. It's good to bait out Noblemen's if they abuse the Noblemen's. And this is like your Raigeki or Dark Coal of the deck. I use Lightning Vortex. I don't care much for it. And the final monster of the deck, Morphing Jar. This, if you don't play Morph, if you don't play Morphing Jar, just don't play the deck. Morphing Jar is really, really good for getting all these cards back into your hand, for getting all the cards in your hand into the graveyard, for easy light dark targets, for the chaos and the BLS. It's really, really good, and it's a free draw five. I wouldn't set this though if your opponent is low on cards in hand. Set this when your opponent has a full hand or when you know they've got junk in their hand. Uh, for the spells, you got to run the Trinity. The Trinity is a must run. Uh, Delinquent Duo, pay a thousand life points, get rid of two cards in your opponent's hand, it's a must. Uh, Graceful Charity, simple, draw three, ditch two, good with Thunder Dragons, uh, good with Sinisters, or good with dead cards in general. Pot of Greed, draw, well, simple, right there, draw two. Uh, for the round off another good card I wouldn't recommend running this in other goat decks just in this deck in chaos control in general it's really good for getting rid of dead cards in your hand getting rid of your opponent's hand and redrawing cards and it gets lights and darks in the grave book of moon I mean it's just really good in every goat deck it's good for stopping attacks and it combos well with noblemen's which is really good for opponents that are constantly setting face and constantly setting merchants if you're playing the mirror match or sniping out morphing jars that could end your day or help your day. It's really good and all for sniping out the monster set. MST, back row removal, simple. Mm, the power spells. Same thing as MST, good back row removal. Don't activate this if your opponent has less than two cards unless you're going to push for a game. Uh, snatch steal, I really just push for game with the snatch steal or if they have a BLS or something. It's really good. This is another thing. I normally don't activate this unless if I really need it or if I'm pushing for game. On to the traps. Uh, I like to call these my power four. Oh, sorry. I like to call these the power four because I feel like every goat deck runs this. Ring for pushing for game or for getting close to game. I normally, I actually won two games with this, with ring, so it's a really good card. Mirror force for saving for saving your monsters from being destroyed from other things and also for clearing your opponent's board to push for game same thing with TT whenever they summon something like a BLS clear the board you don't want that happening and then cough it's it's simple it's a monster reborn for this deck and then the final card return from the different dimension it gets back all your banished like I was saying earlier on in the video uh, where is he Thunder Dragon for banishing thunder good for banished Thunder Dragons uh, good for banished Xerions and stuff like that and all in all, I win games with this card. This this card is really good. Uh, extra deck, I mean, you don't really need one because I don't play anything at all. Any, I don't even side any of the metamorphoses. On to this side deck. Kaiku, good for the mirror match. It locks your opponent out to where he can't banish. Uh, big shield, good for punishing. I actually saw this. I forgot the video that I watched, but... It's good for punishing players with noblemen. And I was like, you know, I'll, I'll side that. And it, I didn't go into it at all, but I look forward to going in it when I when I would go into it. Exiled. I just sided this for punishing players that constantly spam metamorphosis and stuff like that into extra deck. It's an easy summon. It's an easy pop. Gets rid of Jinzo and all that type of stuff that can hurt you. Kinetic Soldier. This card's really good for up against Beast Down or any deck that runs the Warrior Engine. It pumps him up pretty big and he can get over a lot of things. I never did decide into him though. King Tiger Wangu. He's kind of like a must in GOAT. Um, second Tsukiyomi for Beast Down. I said I did not like maining two and I don't like maining two. I like siding one and then maining one. But Tsukiyomi for the other Beast Down decks. The Gravekeeper Engine. Uh, I wouldn't recommend three spies. I think I believe I have my guard on me. If I don't, oh, I don't. Um, this should really be a guard. 
I don't know why I done this. Now looking back, this should be a guard. So if you have a great peacekeeper's guard, it's better to run side these two. And it's good for stopping beasts down. And it's good for the mirror match also because it's hard to get over. Chaos Sorcerer is the only thing that really gets over it in BLS. Uh, Jinzo and Aeronite. I sleeve these things up because they're, they're like my babies. I never did go into this, but this is good for if you play a burn deck. And this is just good in general for free draw power and easy piercing damage if they run three goats and abuse them. Swords, because I feel like it's a really good side deck card in any goat deck. It gets stall power on the board for you. Uh, dust, because I don't main one. And it's another back row removal. And the final card, Royal Command. This card is really good. I didn't side into it, but it's skill drain for flip effects. If I have any suggestions on this deck, that I mentioned Fusion, I would suggest if you want to play this card, play this card. And the only monster that I really didn't care about is Ashra Priest or DD Assailant. Not DD Assailant, um, Night Assailant, my bad. These are the only two cards that I thought about taking out, like wanting to take out. Other than that, that wraps up. Well, I might be making more YouTube videos and more decks soon. If you hate the video, dislike it. And if you're subscribed to me, unsubscribe if you don't like my content. Uh, oh yeah, the what my what my name stands for is the only big green Yu-Gi-Oh. That's what the little letters stand for because my Xbox gamer tag. If you didn't know that already, and my name is Johnny. And I might make videos more soon. I'll see you guys later.